Greetings and welcome to the Dream Syndicate. Today we're making a poseable mixed media dragon. So let's get crafting. I have my armature that which is constructed of aluminum wire, upholstery foam, plumber's epoxy, which you can get at hardware stores, and also a bit of steel wire. What I'm doing right now is creating a little bit more girth around the aluminum wire for the dragon's neck. So th with this paper tape here, it's going to make it a little thicker. And when I go to put the dragon's head on that's around the aluminum tube, it'll fit on snugly. These spine spikes here were also sculpted out of plumber's epoxy. I'm just giving it a coat of off-white paint. Here I'm taking some rough measurements for the main form of the body for this fabric. But as I work, I'm kind of go going to refine and, and find a better form to, to fit the body of the dragon. So I'll make a bunch of little cuts uh, inward cut some holes through the fabric that I can put the legs in like I'm doing right here. If you want to watch me make the imaginary reality weekly, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. As I work, you'll notice me folding fabric, pinning pieces of fabric, sometimes tucking pieces of fabric in, and that's what I'll keep on doing that until I get shapes and forms that I'm happy with. Right now the dragon's side looks like a loose bag, so I'm making some adjustments that'll be able to tighten up the side form so it'll look more substantial. As I work on this poseable dragon, he still needs a name, so if you have any suggestions, be sure to put those down in the comments below.
One challenge you'll find when making something like this is anything that has a lot of spiky protruding bits or bits of wire that are sticking out, it's really hard to not catch your thread on it. So you're constantly trying to maneuver your thread around whatever random bit of the creature happens to be sticking out of your sewing. Right now our dragon looks like a Frankenstein of stitches all over his body, but fortunately we're planning on painting the whole thing green, and we used green thread, so you're not really going to notice that so much. And let's be sure to remember that age's old carpenter's edge. Measure the dragon's arm twice, cut once. In much the same way I was able to use the paper tape to secure the head onto the body, I'm going to do the same thing to attach the feet to each of the legs once they're cut down to size. To make the dragon's legs, I'm just going to be making little sleeves for each for the appendages, just measuring it out, cutting each one, and sewing it on. And now it's time to give this dragon some wings. I'm creating the basic shape in pencil here, but I do end up giving it an allowance of say an extra quarter of an inch because I know I'm gonna fold over elements and sew those to the back side of the wing. I spent some time here messing around with the, the wires inside of the wings, trying to get them to have a good shape to them. You know, that classic sort of dragon bat wing shape. 
Now I'm gonna take some Fabri-Tac and attach the wing frame to the, the main body of the wing here. Now we'll just draw the outline of the head frill pieces. Again, I'll use one of my go-to's when I need to attach fabric to something and use some Fabri-Tac. Another material that I like to use is acrylic matte medium. I use it if I want fabric to have a bit more density or stiffness or even a little bit of texture. So I'm going back and forth between using water and the acrylic matte medium to uh, thin out that matte medium across the fabric. The acrylic matte medium usually needs a few hours to dry, and depending on how much wear and tear I expect the surface to, to need to take, I will either do two or three coats of it. I'll just apply the same technique that I did to the head frill to the wings here. Now it's time to paint this dragon's body. So I chose this light blue fabric because I knew it was gonna be complementary to the green, and it was light enough that the shade of green I was going to mix up was going to overpower it anyway. I also decided I wanted to give this little dragon uh, those little sort of hook-like claws that come off of the, the, the wings. So I'm building that onto there right now. I had to poke a hole in it and I'm sculpting with the plumber's epoxy and now taking some of that paper tape and working that around so it starts to blend in with the wing.
Here I'm painting the orange of the wing interior and I'll also use this color for the neck frills as well. Lastly, I decided that that shade of red-orange was too harsh, so I went for a paler tone, and I liked that contrast better. And now we've completely finished Dragon. What do you think? Thank you for watching. If you want to join me weekly for making the imaginary reality, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Until next time, make believe!